Hi there team and welcome to another update on our eruption occurring in Iceland. Today is Tuesday, April 9th. It is about 1.30 Mountain Daylight Time, 7.30 p.m. over in Iceland. I am geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me as we look at some of the recent developments that have been taking place in Iceland with the eruption on the Reykjanes Peninsula since my last update, which was on Sunday, April 7th. So let's go into a few things here and see what's been happening. Of course, Sunday was an exciting day as we saw part of the erupting spatter cone. Remember, we're down to one primary vent with this eruption and the conduit that was carrying lava out of the the crater lake inside the spatter cone out the base of the cone uh, that either became plugged up or the weight of the lava lake became too much for it. Uh, for whatever reason, it started to fill up the lava lake uh, and eventually it was spilling over the top and that made for some very dramatic footage and quite an aesthetically pleasing eruption as you just saw this lava cascading over the rim of the spatter cone on this site here on the southwest side. Uh, since that time, I did that. So we looked at that during my live stream on Sunday. And then if you remember, I had to skedaddle because I was going down to Salt Lake City to meet with my daughter. And that evening, what occurred was the backside of the crater, the backside of the cone here, uh, partially collapsed. Some of the lava started spilling over onto the north side. And that's why the cone looks a little bit smaller. So remember that uh, prior to Sunday's event, this backside, the east and north sides of the cone were built up quite a bit higher than the southwest side. And now you can see that's that's almost like reversed itself. Now the, the remaining high side of the cone is the south and I suppose southeast side of the cone. So a little bit different activity. So here's one view of what's going on today as we speak here. So it's still uh, intermittently tossing out bits of lava spatter uh, from the central vent in the crater here. Uh, of course, when those hit on the rim of the cone, they will accrete and build up the cone. So if this activity continues for a number of days or maybe even weeks, we could see the cone resume its former height. We can also see some of the lava is clearly being carried by that basal conduit out in feeding this lava channel here in the foreground. As the lava is going from the central vent crater uh, and then out to through this conduit at the base, some of the gases are escaping and in the more permeable zones along the flank of the cone here. And that's why you're seeing all this active outgassing and all this, this plume of gases here um, right on the flank of the, the spatter cone. Um, so we'll have to see how long this will go. We'll, we'll look at the GPS data and some other information here in a bit. Here's a view from the backside of the cone. You can again, again see how much lower the north and east sides are. This is the section that collapsed a little bit here. And it looks like we do have some flow out here on the north side. So I'm not sure if there's uh, maybe something open along the base here or exactly what's feeding this flow here out on the north side. But nonetheless, neither flow to the south or to the north is really advancing appreciably in any given direction. The town is not threatened. Uh, there's no threats right now to the Blue Lagoon or the Svartsengi power plant. This lava that's coming out of the spatter cone vent is still ponding and pooling up in this low relief topography here that surrounds it. Let's look at that collapse though that occurred Sunday night. So here's um, a video from that same camera. So we're looking at this same camera from the looking from the east to the west at our main cone there. Uh, and what we should be able to see here, now this happened at night, is you can see it's starting to spill out the backside there. I think this one kind of comes in a little bit late, but you can see it uh, spilling over the rim on the north side coming down this side and then there's a secondary channel that develops here more to the east side um, and then you'll be able to watch part of this thing collapse down here if you watch this area just to the right of this portion here um, so you can see the lava just spilling out of that elevated lava lake that was in the crater on Sunday um, and just spilling over the top and then we might see it somewhere in here. There's a little bit of a collapse of this thing. I swear it's coming any minute now. Now uh, maybe there's a piece right there. Yeah, some of these pieces here, not a big collapse. We can see this whole piece kind of just come down right here. So there was a wholesale collapse probably into the crater 
um, that reduce the height of this crater wall on this side of the cone. Um, and then you can see these, these primary channels here just emptying out, not emptying out, but lowering the level of the lava lake up there at the summit crater. Pretty spectacular. Uh, that was just quite uh, a treat on Sunday to see such different eruptive behavior, to see the lava lake uh, rise in the crater, presumably because we had that, that obstruction there. Um, and this really shouldn't come as a surprise because we've seen the same thing in 2023. So here's the 2023 eruption of Litli Hrutur. Uh, this is January, excuse me, July 19th, 2023. And you'll see actually a little bit more dramatic view here. So there's the, the primary eruptive vent, this spatter cone from 2023. But watch this left side of, and I think we're looking here to the, I think we're looking to the northwest here, a little bit to the west. Um, but watch this left side of the cone here uh, as this, this lava lake uh, starts to peel away at this area here. So, you know, it's a similar behavior, a little bit coming over maybe the backside here. You can see some of the lava draining off this side over here to, I guess, the south, southwest. Uh, and then you'll see a bigger wholesale collapse of this section here in a second. Here it goes. So it's actually being, uh, yep, compromised right here. And then there goes that whole rim of the spatter cone and then the lava emptying out here. Just that big bright flash. I mean, that's some of the hottest, uh, most liquid lava. You can see just advancing across the landscape here, just running over this lava here is this very hot fluid lava just empties out of that central lava lake in the crater. Um, so similar event, there's another collapse right there that took place. Uh, again, this is 2023. So this was not the eruption from, or the event from Sunday, but very similar. And one reason why these spatter cones, you know, they just, they, they have a finite height. Uh, they build up, uh, the lava lake can rise in them, but that pro pro provides a tremendous amount of pressure. Uh, overspilling can compromise the walls here. This agglutinate that makes up these walls is, is sometimes kind of weak. It's permeable. And so you can end up with a collapse like that. So uh, pretty interesting just to kind of compare what happened um, Sunday night and with what happened this past July. Let's look at the Met Office. There's a new update. So we have some more information and data that we can uh, scrutinize and look at together. So this is as of today, April 9th, about three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and this is the translated version. I don't think they've got the English one up now. We could maybe check really quick and see if there is an English version of this. Um, nope, they don't have it up yet in English. So that's why oftentimes I've just kind of gotten used to just going to the the Icelandic version and just letting Google Translate do as best we can here. So um, land rise continues in constant magma flow under Svartsengi. Although the power of the eruption has decreased, there are no signs that the overall flow of magma from depth is decreasing. So we seem, we don't have any evidence to suggest that the amount of magma being supplied has decreased. At the same time, I haven't seen anything that shows that it increased. Remember during my live stream on Sunday, uh, a lot of folks speculating that that overspill out of the spatter cone maybe because it looks so visually overpowering that it looked like there was much more lava coming out of that vent. And so far, I haven't seen any data that suggests that that actually took place rather than the plugged up basal vent and then all and then the lava rising and then overspilling. So that seems to be the case, at least for right now. So the overall lava flow from the craters between the 3rd to the 8th uh, was about 3.6 cubic meters per second. Tomorrow, they're anticipating winds out of the east-southeast. And so that would carry that, that, those gases right into the Svartsingi Blue Lagoon area. And as such, uh, last I checked, the Blue Lagoon is going to be closed, I think, the next two days because of the uh, wind forecast and the direction that that gas would be traveling at that time. Um, they did a survey flight and they were, let's see, they're able to estimate the size of the lava bed. I'll get to the map here in a second. So the thickness of the lava bed. Um, average flow again was about 3.6 cubic meters per second. Um, and then prior to that, it was about 6.6 .6 cubic meters per second. So it's dropped about in half over what we were seeing at the end of March, early April. 
The area of the flow field, all the lava that's on the ground from this eruption is about six or so square kilometers. Volume's about 31 million cubic meters of lava. Uh, recently, lava has flowed south from the crater, but it temporarily flowed, flowed a short distance to the north on Sunday evening. We looked at that when we saw that breach there, where the rim of the crater was ruptured. Uh, as can be seen on the attached map, the lava has thickened the most near the crater and a little south where there is most of the activity in the lava bed. So let's check out that map then because we've got a new uh, flow field map and let's work on the size a little bit here. Let's start with the kind of big overview here. Uh, so our eruptive, main eruptive vent is right about here and we'll be able to zoom in on that a little bit here in a second. Notice the scale for the thickness of the flows. Uh, goes up to at its thickest, it's over 22 meters, so well over 60 feet thick, which is quite impressive. Uh, and then at the thinnest, it's down to you know less than a few meters. But there's the primary cone. You can actually make out the cone here, um, you know the crater, that central cone that's still erupting, and see that. And this is as of April 8th, and see that you know the thickness quickly uh, of the lava quickly dissipates as you move off to the north. But the main thrust of the lava that's flowing out of this thing to the south. It's mainly ponding up here and producing this very thick flow bed here. And then some of it in the past has traveled down into these regions. And this is the quarry. So we've got a little thicker distribution of lava over here because we filled in that low spot, that depression from that uh, quarry for road base and such. So, so a nice little flow field, but essentially we haven't really seen uh, any of the the, the lava flow field edges really expanding or moving into new regions for the most part. Part of that's topographically. We've got a hill here, this old shield volcano here. So there's really nowhere east to west for this lava to go. And so it's just sort of ponding up and inflating and rising in this area. So undoubtedly, we, when we get a new topographic map of this area, this will be substantially different than it was prior to that. Um, and we'll just have to see if this eruption keeps continuing at this pace, which is which is not erupting a tremendous amount of lava. Um, my guess is, is there's still small spaces and pockets and such for it to accumulate here. So I wouldn't anticipate, based on what we're seeing right now, any of that lava, you know, reinvigorating the far distal ends of the flow field, like down here or some of these other places like out here. Like, I just don't think that'll happen based on what we have going on right now. Um, so that is the Met Office update. And I think that's it for today's update. There was a little bit of an update yesterday on the 8th where they talk about uh, the GPS data, which we'll talk about here in a second as well. And because the lava was flowing over the rim, uh, there was a little bit of an uptick in some of the um, the tremor graphs that re that re record the the movement of the of the magma there. So um, there's a fun new 3D f map that's out, and I'll try to get this right. It's a little uh, squirrely. You can quickly like flip it upside down and then it kind of makes you motion sick because I'll try to move this around and walk you through this a little bit so you can move it around with your mouse but you can also use your mouse scroll wheel whoops see how I did it there um, to zoom in a little bit and I'll put a link to this as well if anyone's interested in playing with this but you can see uh, the flow field see I did it again there we go the January 14th a uh, small little fissure that opened up that destroyed three houses. You can nicely pick out the defensive berms that have been erected here. And if you zoom in here close enough, you can really actually see the color difference between the more recent lava here, which is a little bit more gray or silvery gray black, and then this older, slightly older lava that's black here. So there's the quarry that was filled in right here, this flow lobe that cascaded down into this quarry, filling it up. Uh, here's Hagefeld, this hill right here. And then if we move in a little bit closer here, we can actually uh, see the eruptive vent with the gases coming out and some of the flow field in this area here. So again, most of the lava piling up here to the south and not so much anymore moving off to the north. So kind of a fun little model. You can spin this thing around, go crazy with it. Um, make yourself or some others motion sick. It takes a bit to kind of get used to, to kind of manipulate it and move. 
as you can see, I'm kind of struggling my way through it. So, but a nice little resource here, and a nice, um, you know, in the absence of a, I mean, this substitutes nicely as a as a flow field map, having this satellite imagery that works really nicely. So, um, okay, so that's there for you. Let's take a look at the GPS data, and let me make sure I got this updated. We'll start with uh, Svartsengi, go to places any, and the one that we have tended to look at the most, but we'll look at some other stations as well. So again, we're going to go to this last plot, which shows up-down motion. Here's our big eruptive event that started the whole thing on March 16th. And you can see the trend since then, and it seems to be um, mostly a case of either you know slight inflation, periods of time where it's basically level and there's no inflation. Uh, but then we can see a little bit of an uptick here few days ago in April uh, but since then either that's probably if we take a close look at that either slight inflation or nearly level it depends on how you kind of interpret with the error bars there but there's our last few days of data you can see this little steeper increase here but the point is is that since the beginning of the eruption and today uh, there's clearly a slight uh, inflationary trend again it's much slower than what we've seen in the past with these much steeper slopes and trends here. Um, but nonetheless, the conclusion is that some magma, or the interpretation, I suppose, is that some magma is being accumulated beneath um, the surface. And so it's not all making its way up to the surface based on at least this GPS data. So interesting. Uh, another thing I'll put a link to that a viewer sent me is there's this fun, this is a little bit different. It's not a 3D model like the other one. But this has been updated to show the extent of the March 8th, or excuse me, April 8th, uh, the flow field as of April 8th, so that was yesterday. And so you can um, you know, add these layers if you want, if you wanna see the, what it looked like on uh, different dates. These are all dates that the imagery was acquired. So you can look at what things looked like on February 8th when it was snow covered and we were looking at the February eruption shown here. Uh, in black then you can come in and look at even way back in like January what things looked like at that point in time um, when that eruption was taking place but we'll just look at the most recent one here the April 8th um, flow field similar to that 3d model but uh, it doesn't have the ability to kind of tip on its side not sure what this little reflection thing is here just something in the processing not quite sure what that is there, but that nicely shows this this main spatter cone vent. Looks like there is some lava escaping from the base and feeding some of that north side flow that we saw uh, from this camera here. So remember we looked here, we can see some of this lava pouring out onto this north side of the cone and it appears there is a spot near the base of the cone on the northeast side where the lava is able to escape and feed this smaller little flow field down here. So turn on lights. There we go. Um, yeah, so this is nice here. A little hard to see through some of the gases here, but the lava is in general not extending too far. And then the other thing you can add to this is you can click on this is just an outline, kind of a grayscale outline of the flow field. So this is a nice handy resource as well that I can uh, make sure is available for those that want to take a look at it. So just another resource we have here at our disposal. And if we go to the earthquake and wrap up with this, uh, kind of again, mostly a nothing burger, not much happening here on the earthquake front on the seismicity, nothing near the vent for the most part, little cluster of very small quakes that have happened over the past 24 hours. Uh, near Fagordalsfjeld, but nothing that would be suggestive of anything other than just, you know, uh, weak zones in the crust over here, uh, possibly reactivate or being reactivated or reacting to uh, the changing stress conditions over here or with this magma body that's inflating into the subsurface and then where the eruption's taking place. If we add all the quakes, do we get any more? Not really. So. For, so for seismicity, it's pretty quiet on the Reykjanes Peninsula, at least for today. So uh, there you have it, a quick update. Thanks for your support and time. I will be sure to get with you as soon as I can. I do have a busy 
rest of my week here with uh, a field trip on Thursday with some students that'll take up most of the afternoon. And then Friday and Saturday, some of you I will see here live in Twin Falls uh, when I do a few of the little local field trips here. So I have two day trips planned for YouTube viewers, one on Friday, one on Saturday. Uh, if at this late notice you can make it per chance, we're gonna have great weather, uh, let me know with an email and we can get you on the list. This field trip actually still has a little bit of space in it, so it's not completely at capacity, which is great. So perhaps you can join us then. The June trips as of right now are filled, but I will get some more on the calendar for later in the summer and fall as we move forward. So thanks for joining me on this update on the situation in Iceland. We'll be sure to get together soon. Not sure when the next live stream will be. Might be, might be Sunday or possibly uh, early next week. So look for that soon. Thanks again, team. Appreciate you and have a good day.